that's a one. Okay, so I am uh, Serge Joriu from uh, Miami Dequash. I'm the city of Miami Dequash, and I'm going to start the presentation by playing a short video that explains how the app works. So we we'll see if the video is working. This, this is, is Alice. Alice. Alice experiences seizures, which has a big impact on her life. However, the way she deals with it daily is unique. She is using My Medic Watch Epilepsy app. This app is designed to create personal freedom for people like Alice, who experience seizures while providing peace of mind for family and caregivers. Using algorithms, the app monitors your well-being and can alert your caregivers when you have a seizure. Should Alice have a seizure, the app will detect it immediately and send an alert to Alice's list of caregivers. Because someone experiencing a seizure may not be able to trigger an alert, the entire process is automated. As you can see, alerts have been immediately sent to each of the caregivers Alice has registered with the app, her mother, her father, and her sister. There is also an escalation process, which will automatically continue to give notifications until a caregiver is able to respond to the situation. When Alice's mother acknowledges the alert, confirming she can provide assistance, her message is relayed instantly to Alice and all other caregivers, reassuring them help is on the way. Alice can share her dashboard, which includes episode information, with her doctor. This will help her manage her health condition in the future. With the My Medic Watch Epilepsy app, Alice enjoys peace of mind that allows her to live her life to the fullest. Okay, so as you seen on the video, My Medic Watch provides a smart detection app, which automatically detects seizure and fall and alert caregiver for, for help. So our solution has been clinically tested in two hospitals in Australia. And uh, we've got a validation study and being published. So you can have a look at the website. Our solution is discreet, no stigma, and run on uh, smartwatches like Apple smartwatches, Samsung smartwatches, uh, Wear OS smartwatches. And uh, we are available on 55 countries in the world now through the app stores. Uh, the app has got as well a live monitoring data that's fed to the caregiver company on the app and all the historical data can be shared to caregiver and doctors. Uh, the algorithm working on the smartwatch is using specific and unique parameters and settings can be set for each uh, user and also can be set for medical condition. That's where we are a bit different. Uh, there is, a, as well as you've seen on the video, uh, notification process and escalation to give caregiver constant updates. So everyone is informed and we should. Our algorithm is patent protected and we've got additional patent as well as spending for machine learning to increase even further detection accuracy and could provide a prediction alert. The problem we are solving is in twofold. When an individual is unconscious on the floor, for example, after a seizure or fall, uh, or unable to uh, manually alert, uh, the MyMedic Watch immediately send uh, automatic alert to caregiver. So that's lowering the time or interventions. Also, when people with epilepsy or prone to fall, they are fear, they got a fear to have a seizure or fall and not be able to get help. So with my medic watch, they can be reassured that they can get help if they have a medical episode, anywhere and anytime. And this increase independence and give them peace of mind. Our roadmap is, uh, is quite long, but in fact, the first thing you are going to do is to get Collect, uh, collect more data to the smart washers sensor. Heart rate, ECG, activity, sweat, temperature, they all coming on the sensor on the watches. Okay. Uh, this one will uh, be feeding data to our machine learning uh, training model. And our goal as a medic watch is to be able to provide an app that being able to 
send prediction alerts uh, from the AI Enrich uh, personal profile. Also, we are going to move the app to uh, entirely the app to the autonomous LTE smartwatches, so you won't need the phone anymore. And uh, we've got more alerts coming, triggered by arch rate, uh, variability, geofencing, voice, and combination of that. And the next release is going to be medication reminder and journals, and much more. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you, Serge. Uh, Brandy, would you like to start us off with a question? Sure. Um, so uh, thank you very much for this presentation. This is becoming a crowded field. Uh, what is it in particular that differentiates your approach from the others that are already available or others that we've heard today? Yeah, I know that's a little bit crowded, but uh, our competition advantage, I will say that uh, our algorithm is a little bit different. Okay, so we are, as I said, using specific uh, parameters and settings okay that's uh, assigned to each user but most importantly that can be set for medical conditions so for example you can have a very very tiny movements okay and we can dictate that we can have a large one like this or maybe faster everything can be set up so in my view that's a unique way to do it and i haven't seen any competition doing this so our accuracy for detection, I think, is pretty high. I'll, uh, I'll take the next one. So uh, from time to time, I uh, text my wife, and um, she doesn't always write back right away. I think it only happens to me. Uh, so my question would be, uh, would it be better for the medic wash to notify 911, or is it better to wait for families to be alerted and to respond? Are you solving the right problem? Yeah, good question. In fact, I think the best way would be to uh, notify caregivers and loved ones. It could be neighbors, okay, it could be nurse. And there is an escalation process, in fact, to call 991 if no caregiver can be helping the patients on the floor. Okay, that's important. But I think the best way is to work with caregiver first, okay, and family members. And uh, yeah, they receive in fact GPS notification as well, so they know exactly where the patient is. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, coming back to a question we've heard already is just um, in regards to sensitivity and specificity. Um, currently, um, you know, or how good do you think you can get in terms of false positive rate um, and also and balancing that with sensitivity? So we've got a validation study. You can find it on the website. Uh, for the full detection, and we uh, we got to one point seven percent of uh, uh, false positive, and about sixteen percent for false negative, and the sensitivity about seventy seven percent. Okay, so it's quite good. And we we've done this uh, validation study without to use specific settings or the setting where as default. Okay, so if you apply the setting for the medical condition and the particular user, the accuracy can be higher for the detection. So I'm, I'm interested in the different modal, you're, you're looking at different you know, heart rate and movement and other things, different parameters. Who, who works with people to figure that out? Like do the people that use the, use the app just have to figure out on their own or do they co get coaching? I mean, cause I think, you know, to go through and and tune that right would be to know how to you know make a high amplitude movement or low amplitude movement would take some expertise so have you looked at that yeah good question in fact because this uh, app is you know we're quite uh, using a lot of technologies and many for the settings so first we we launched the app in australia okay and we had a lot of feedback from users we modify a little bit the way to explain how to use these particular settings we have a very good customer service as well. So people call us and say, okay, I have them use these settings, okay? And after that, we, uh, we launched in America and Europe and things like this. So the main thing is to um, explain exactly how this particular setting are working, okay? And, uh, and have a good customer service to help them setting up the setting regarding their medical, medical conditions and uh, and uh, and the particular user. Okay, so that's what we do.
Okay, we're going to take uh, one question from the Zoom here. Okay, um, go ahead and ask your question uh, from Zoom. Okay, Dr. Uh, Elterman, just unmute yourself and then go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so, you, you know, the, the real thing that we want to do with patients, one of the real things, is make them independent. And, and that means they're not stuck at home. So does this device locate where the person is? Say, for example, one lives in the suburbs and the uh, person, the teenager, wants to go downtown to go shopping um, and has a seizure. But you know, where downtown that patient is, isn't really known. So d does your device locate them? Very good question. So yeah, the device locate them. We are monitoring all the time their GPS uh, locations. And okay. caregiver, when they receive a notification, they have got a button, in fact, to see where is this patient. And they can go to directly, they didn't know how, how long is it going to take for them to go there, okay? <laughs> uh, so yeah, GPS location is, uh, is, uh, is on the app, that's, that's, that's quite important. So it's a good question because we want to give independence of these particular people with epilepsy. And, um, and they want to move around by themselves, okay? So the main thing is when they are in monitoring all the time, okay, um, they will be monitored, of course, all the time. And if something happened to them, a caregiver can go and let them. So uh, if I may just um, ask one more aspect, um, I assume distance is not an issue. So if the family lives uh, 20 miles away and the kid is downtown, uh, you're using GPS, but the, the actual uh, notifying the uh, caregivers uh, distance is not an issue. Yes, so it depends how far is a caregiver to help the, <laughs> the patient, of course, okay. But usually you don't have only one caregiver, okay. Caregiver for us is not only family member or one, it could be the neighbors, it could be the nurse, okay? Uh, so that's important to have caregiver that's not far away and they can help the patient if he's lying on the floor somewhere. No, no I, I don't think that's an issue. I mean, I don't know that a person, a caretaker is gonna be near the, the child or the teenager. Um, it was more that it, since you do have where the person is located, you could call, the caregiver could call uh, 911 and, you know, say, my daughter is, uh, you know, downtown at such and such a location. She just had a seizure. So I was just concerned about the distance uh, in terms of notifying the caregiver. Yeah, that's correct. In fact, yeah, because they give you know exactly where the patient is, so they can call one 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 and give the uh, GPS location to the patients, and they can go there. Okay. Very good. Okay. Right, thank thank you. you, Serge. Uh, Dr. Elterman, I'm going to play the the uh, sh the clock shark here. I apologize. We're going to keep this keep this round moving, and uh, thank Serge for his time and presentation. <laughs> 